Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video today, we will see real comprehensive start to finish troubleshooting on electrical circuits on this atrium lift. We got this lift in and it's in great shape, but some of the functions don't work. So I'll preface this video by saying that before you can even get started, you want to make sure that you have the wiring schematic, wiring diagram, whatever you want to call it, and you want to have all the proper tools for the job as well meters, jumper wires, probes, you know, whatever whatever you want to use. I prefer using a multimeter, but there's a lot of different ways you could go. So definitely want to make sure you have all the right tools and of course a good electrical schematic. So I secured all that before even getting started on this project. Don't even bother taking on a project like this unless you have that stuff. No out, in runs, no down, only up. So here I'm just going up in the basket and making sure that none of the basket functions are working. Just basically making sure I have all the same symptoms up in the basket as well as the base of the boom. And here I'm just writing down my findings so that I can kind of keep my thoughts straight, make sure that I don't forget anything. We're troubleshooting here. I suspect that moment limit switch one is faulty because these three relays are not energizing when the lift turns on. So I'm going to check this junction point here, U1, U8. So U8, let's see, let's see if we can figure that out here. So this is U18. I got nothing there. Hmm. Let's see if we could energize that. Probably not the best idea, but let's see if we could yeah, energize U8. Oh, that's it. Oh, yes. Let's review what we did here. Here's my understanding of this circuit. We have positive on the top here. We have negative on the bottom here. This originates from the first page. Yeah, so basically a negative on the bottom, negative flows on the bottom, positive flows on the top. We have a multitude of diodes and relays and whatnot. So here we've got moment limit switch one, excuse me, moment limit switch two, moment limit switch one. Let's take a look at those. As far as I know, these are, those are both here, moment one and moment two. That's why they have these little tags on here to seal them off. Now I have to prove that this is actually bad, but we've isolated things here. Moment limit one checks the motion range limit switch it flows over to U1, U8 terminal, which we just checked. It had zero voltage. That's where we applied 24 volt positive energy, which is what moment limit switch one would allow to energize relays K25, K13, and K7. These three relays, let's look at those. Let's look at K25, for example. That's K25 on the right. That is supposed to energize. The ones on the left are energizing when I turn the key switch on, but that is not energizing. So I got this, this little jumper here. We'll put it on the positive bus. You could see I have the positive and negative there. So when we come over, so watch what happens when I apply energy to K8. See that? We get all those relays working. So we have some sort of problem that we need to solve. We proved that we don't have energy there, but if we put energy there, we get all of these relays and all the functions of the lift work that didn't work before. That was boom down, telescope, and emergency lowering. So I suspect we have to work our way back here. Let's check, let's check X249. If we don't have voltage there, but we have voltage on U13, then we prove that moment limit switch one is the culprit. So let's check X249 next. We have the negative hooked up to the battery bus right here. All right, so needed some help. So looked in the control cabinet, looks like this bus down here is X2. So directly next to the K25 relay, we've got X249. So we got to check that. That's going to be our next point here. X249, we got to see if we have it there. X249, all right, so we do have it there. 
So that indicates to me we have it at X249. So that indicates to me that the motion range limit switch is bad. E9. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't even show E9 in here. All right. So now I'm going to check the, at least the energy going to uh, E9, wherever that may be. I'm going to check this energy source right here. I'm going to check U13, which I believe we have. I'll check U13 and then I'll check X102. So positive should be on U13. One U13. 13. Got it. Now we gotta check negative. So this is X102. And 13. And we have it there. So we have energy going to E. We have we have energy on either side of that E9. But the question is why don't we have E9 and where is E9? So we have energy there. We have energy there. X102 and U13. But we don't have E9. The question is where is E9? Motion range limit switch. Let's just try this out here. I'm gonna jumper this out. Okay, so at this point I just wanted to put the jumper on there, make sure I was definitely right that that was what was wrong with it and it absolutely was. So now I had to sit down and do some more research and figure out what E9 was or where it was. All right, we're gonna pack this lift up now. So at this point, it was time to call Service One, the company that takes care of all the United States parts, service, questions, etc. These lifts are still supported by them because at this point, I could not find any info in the operator's manual or wiring diagram what E9 was. Couldn't find it anywhere inside the control cabinet. Couldn't find it in the wiring diagram. No clue where it is. So I called service one and was able to thankfully get some help. Okay, just got off the phone with Nick from service one, which takes care of the parts and stuff for these lifts in the United States. Give me some great info. He suspected, he was 90% sure that E9, which we figure is bad. We have energy going to it, but we don't think we have energy going through it. He told me that that's the Petula board. So this, which was underneath a cover, I believe is the Petula board. It has the matching terminal designations. So apparently the purpose of this is to look at where the lift is in space to make sure that it doesn't go out of the range that's safe for the lift to travel to. So for example, the boom can stick out 80 feet, but if you stick it out 80 feet horizontal, you'll end up tipping the lift over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it outside again, we're gonna set it back up, and we're going to prove with the voltmeter that we are losing energy across these terminals. Well, you know what that means. It's time to pull the lift out and set it up again, put out all the outriggers, and start doing some more testing. So hopefully we could figure things out this time. Let's see. If you're enjoying this content so far, or if it has helped you in any way, please drop a like down below. Okay, so we are back to troubleshooting here. So now I can finally check the motion range limit switch, which is the Pachula board, contacts 28 and 30. If my troubleshooting is correct, I should have 24 volt positive energy on 30, but not on 28. So let's see what it says. I have my multimeter all set up and I have the negative lead hooked up to the negative bus from the battery. I'll use my positive lead to check each terminal. So I should have it on 30, but not 28. Let's see. And I do have it there. Let's see if I have it on 28. Nothing on 28. So I have it on 30, but not 28. Hmm. So I am losing it. Let's check this fuse. Maybe that could be it. I could test the fuse by looking at energy on each side of it. Let's see. I have it on one side. Huh. I have it on that side. But I'm losing a lot there. It's almost like it's high resistant. Okay, I just... I just took it off charge, so let's see. We're gonna see some slightly different voltages, so 
This was full bus, 26.5. And this is six volts, I'm losing it. Huh. This is a 1.6 amp fuse. 1.6 amps, let's see if it's good. All right, so look at this. I'm just gonna show you this fuse, look at this. This is t touching the terminals together. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that's about what the fuse should read. Look what happens when I go across it. This is hard to do. Look at that, open. See that? It's open. So despite the fuse, I know it's gonna be tough for the camera to make that out, but the filament looks good in the fuse. All right, I have to try and find a comparable fuse. Okay, I have a, a just a different style fuse. I'm gonna try bridging across, seeing what happens. Okay, so we're not blowing that fuse. I'm going to measure the amperage across it now to make sure that there's not a fault and that I truly do just have a high resistant fuse. Now we'll measure the amperage across the fuse to make sure that it's not drawing too much. And sure enough, it's not. That's a very low load. The rating of the fuse is 1.5 amps. And inside, looks like we got all the functions. So looks like it was the Betula fuse. So we're gonna get a replacement for this and test it. And as a matter of fact, we'll just jump around it for now and test all the functions. That feels good. That feels good. That was the problem. This fuse right here, though it appeared good, we were able to trace it back to the Betula board fuse. This is it right here. Um, very rewarding, of course, to finish troubleshooting something and actually find the problem. So this was it. We're gonna try and get one of these replacement fuses and then we'll test the lift out. Very thankful that we were able to figure it out because that Betula board is around 10 grand from the manufacturer. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Okay, if you stuck around this far, thank you for watching. I know it may seem silly, of course, that it ended up just being a fuse, but it's tough to know that a fuse even exists when it's hidden under a cover and not mentioned anywhere in the wiring diagram. So. Stay tuned for part two, where we will show you how to set the lift up and use it. Thanks for watching.